dear colleagues, I am glad to welcome you at our Russian National Nuclear University Moscow Engineering Physics Institute. And we are going to talk about admittance tests to our university. As far as I understand, probably you are going to undergo those tests. Well, the intention of this little video is to show you several examples of what we do expect from you uh, as the results of uh, performing this or that tasks of our admission tests. Uh, well, we will uh, consider in this video just only a couple of examples related to uh, the most important, probably, and at least well, the first, uh, which uh, goes in the program, in every academic program, first uh, area of physics, it is mechanics. So in uh, our uh, tests, you may find, well, just tasks. And uh, what do we expect from you uh, to present as the results of those tasks? So let's consider a couple of exercises. The first exercise is very simple. Well, typical mechanical task. Imagine that you have a block. Here you see it uh, as a red brick uh, at the screen and a bullet. A bullet is flying very fast with velocity 500 meters per second and has the mass 9 gram. So it passes the block through, or right through the block, and loses how it forfeits speed. After passing the block, bullet continues flying, but with half of initial velocity. Uh, the more or less damaged block with a hole now, well, starts moving itself. The question is how fast the block will move. So when you uh, are trying to do any test in mechanics, well, you should try to use instruments available in mechanics. Actually, for those tasks, you need just only two or three instruments. That's all. The first instrument is, well, a set of conservation laws. There are some mechanical well, uh, quantities, mechanical values, or some mechanical parameters, which are conserved despite the fact that the system is changing. Well, such parameters are energy, we should know about it. And another thing is pulse or momentum. Well, what about energy? How do you think? Will it be conserved in this process? No, mechanical energy will not be conserved because uh, the bullet damages the block makes a hole in it, probably heats the block. So part of its energy will be tra transformed into heating, into destroying of the structure of the block. And well, we cannot take it into account only within the case. But momentum, momentum is concerned, always. And in this case, momentum, well, we may calculate and we'll try to use it. Because well, the only question that well, we have to use in this particular exercise is please tell us what will be the velocity of uh, the block after the process, yes? So we shall write down the momentum conservation law equation. What we did had before the collision. Before the collision, we had the resting block and the momentum of the resting block is of course to zero and fastly flying bullet with velocity v and mass m, the little one. So the only object in the system that had momentum was a bullet, and the momentum was equal to the product of the mass and the velocity of the bullet. That's all. What do we have after the collision? After the collision, we have still moving bullet, but with only half of the velocity. So half of the momentum is lost, but not lost. It was granted to the block. Now the block is also moving and it has the momentum formula equal to the product of the mass of the block and its velocity, but the sum of two momenta, bullet and block after the collision, shall be equal to the momentum of the block of this bullet, sorry, before the collision. We have a trivial mathematical equation and the solution is, you see it at the screen. The velocity of the block will be four and a half meters per second. Let us consider a little bit more difficult exercise, the second one. 
The same block is sliding down an inclined plane, no bullet in this case, but we'll have some inclined plane in here. So it is sliding down an inclined plane, sliding, not rolling, not rolling, but sliding with friction. And dusk is also losing or just part of energy on friction, because friction, friction means for heating the surfaces. So the block is sliding down an inclined plane uh, from the height a by, uh, or from the height which is equal to three meters, and the length of the plane is five meters. By the way, meanwhile, using the Pythagoras theorem, we may calculate also the third side of this triangle. The third side will be five square minus three square square root. It will be four meters. Okay, very well. Now, what will happen with the block? Block will move with acceleration because it is well, uh, driven by forces. Which forces are acting on this block? It is very important when we are talking about forces, we should draw a picture and draw all the forces with directions and approximately will just in a scale, which one is big, which one is lower, so that everything and should be evident from the picture. We draw a picture and write down and draw on the picture all forces acting on the all important object. Important object is the moving block. So the first force that is acting on it is gravity. It is acting vertically down and is equal to the product of mass and gravity acceleration. Very well. What else? We know that all the motion will be going only along the inclined plane. There will be no motion in direction perpendicular to inclined plane. Only along the plane. As all the motion is well, concentrated only in one direction, then we may say that probably forces in all other directions, in perpendicular direction, first of all, are simply compensated. So we have the component of gravity perpendicular to the inclined plane and there should be some other force that will completely compensate this component. This force is called the normal reaction of the support. Well, when you are staying on the floor, the floor supports you with its normal reaction. That's why you are not falling. The same here. But the tangential component the component which is parallel to the plane of the gravity is not compensated. And from geometry, we may easily calculate it. Simply look at the triangles at the screen, and it is, I think, for just for evidently visible that the component of the gravity parallel to the inclined plane is equal to gravity multiplied by the sinus of the inclination angle of the plane. That's all. Now, which other forces we do have? Also acting along the plane. Friction. Friction is acting against the velocity. It means it is acting along the plane, but in direction up. And we know how to calculate friction. Also, you should know it from books, from school, that friction is simply equal to the normal component of the support reaction multiplied by the coefficient of friction. A normal component of the support reaction is the gravity force multiplied by the cosinus of the inclination angle. So there are two forces acting along the plane, down gravity and opposite friction. Opposite, we take it into account with minus here. And these two forces together should make the object, the block, moving with acceleration which according to the second Newton's law, will be equal simply to what you see here at the screen. The mass is a part of every component of this equation, so we may simply delete it, erase it, yes? And finally, get this result for the acceleration. How to calculate sinuses and cosinuses? Looking at the picture again. Sinus of the inclination angle is the ratio of height and length, in this case, this vertical side of the triangle and diagonal side of the triangle. As in this ratio is equal to three to five. 
cosinus is equal to the ratio of the horizontal side of the triangle and its diagonal side, or it is additionally has to be multiplied by the friction coefficient, which is given in the condition, yes, in the formulation of the exercise. And after you substitute everything, you will find the result two meters per square second. This will be the acceleration of the block. Now the last exercise number three, also related to the In this case, neither conservation laws, nor energy, nor momentum, nor even the second Newton's law will help you. Why? Because in formulation of the exercise, the question is, please find the distance. As soon as we talk about distances or times of motion or how, well, how, well, just, well, what is the distance past in certain time or whatever, time or distance, when time or distance are under question, well, it's not enough to write down the second Newton's law. It will be necessary to calculate functions, to find the solutions, how velocities and coordinates do depend on time. But it is not difficult. Let's have, I'll just go and try to do this particular exercise. The exercise is very practical. Initially, the resting car starts moving with certain acceleration two meters per second. So you press on the accelerator and you start moving. From standing position, from stop, from resting position. So what will be the distance that the car will pass within the third second of motion? I stress it, within only one second, which is the second number three. Not in three seconds, but only within one third second. How to find? We have to write down the definitions. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is the derivative from the velocity. Acceleration in our case is constant, two meters per square second. It means that the velocity must depend on time linearly as acceleration multiplied by time. Why? Substitute it here. Take the derivative, and you will find that the derivative is exactly equal to a acceleration and is constant, exactly as it's required in the formulation of the exercise. And it means this is the correct theory. Now, what does it mean by definition? Velocity. Velocity is the derivative taken from the dependence of coordinate on time. Well, again, I want to remind you, the car is moving in one direction, is not changing the direction. So we may neglect the fact that it may change the direction, that it has some vector characteristics, and consider only one coordinate, x. x, the coordinate along the line along which the car moves. x is the coordinate along the road. Very well. So velocity is the derivative of the coordinate. Velocity changes with time lying near. So to find the solution for the situation means to find such a function, which after taking the derivative will turn into the correct function AT. I think you should know that the solution is AT squared divided by two. If you don't know, then try experimentally to check. Substitute it into the definition. What will you have? T squared, after you take the derivative, will turn into double T. E. Two and two will, go on, will be gone, and you'll we'll have only A and T multiplied. That's so, all. Oh, again, the correct C. Now let's find the answer for our particular exercise. We need to know the distance that will be traveled within only one third. The easiest way to do this is to find the distance that will be traveled by the end of the third second and to extract only the distance which had been traveled within the first three seconds. 
What will be the distance traveled by the end of the third second? We should take the function x equal a t squared divided by 2 and substitute here time equal to exactly 3. We will obtain the result 9 minutes. What was the distance traveled by the end of the second second? Second second. Okay. We substitute t equal to 2 into this general solution for the function x on t and obtain 4 meters. So the 5 meters from 4 to 9 were traveled within the third second. This is the correct solution. Thank you very much. We'll continue in the next video with next section of physics. Bye-bye.